Okay, number two is strumming. This is something that a lot of people get stuck with once rhythms start getting a bit more complicated or they try and think, oh, is it down, is it up? Or like, it can something people can get quite tripped up on and it can really affect your time. Um, there's an academic way of thinking about this. I won't go too far down that road, but I'll kind of explain how I think about it and then you can take it from there if you can. Um, so the first thing is probably how are you holding the pick? I know this is a slightly personal thing. However, it really can affect things. So if you're somebody that holds a pick kind of like this with like two fingers and it's sort of the, the, the point, the sharp end of the pick sticking out of the front, um, the goose, as I like to call it, once that comes to strumming, if you think what's happening, that's a really weird motion. That's quite big motion in order to get the pick to come the other way around. Even if I try to make it small, it's not very reliable. So the way I do it is, and again, play around, find out what works for you, but try and avoid the goose. That sounds like a, like a sign at a park. <laughs> avoid the goose. Do not feed the bears. Um, the way I do it is I'll have the point of the pick. So each, obviously, a pick has a pointy end and then two not so pointy ends. I'll have the pointy end sticking out of the side of my thumb. Not quite a 90 degree, 90 degree angle, kind of maybe, I don't know the degrees, but it's not, it's not perfectly sticking out the side. It's got a little bit, little bit of a turn. You can see that like that. Um, and then the first finger curls underneath, almost like you're gonna, you know, you're gonna flick a coin for all you kind of barroom bets and things you guys are involved in. Um, so that curls underneath and it's that. And what that gives you is a little bit of play here. So this little gap here. So you don't want it to be like super clenched like that. You want it to be a little bit, you know, a little bit open. And that gives you just a little bit of little bit of flex with these this this part of the of the hand. You can kind of flex the thumb and that will change the pick angle. It gives you a little bit of options. So first thing is that. And what that means is the hand is in a relatively natural position for this rest to be able to get to everything as opposed to this. More this. You don't have to move very far at all for the pick to change direction. So that's the first thing. Have a play around with what's going on with the pick if you're finding it difficult and it's sounding a bit clunky. Second tip is you don't have to hit all of the strings all of the time. The difference between uh, this and this it's only subtle, but on the upstrums, I'm not really trying to go all the way up. I'm just kind of hitting the top half. In fact, I actually think about the guitar when it comes to that sort of strumming thing, kind of in two halves anyway. I think about the bottom three strings almost being like the bass drum and the top three strings being more like a snare drum. So if the drum beat went, um, then that'll be low, high, low, 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 high, and then to translate that to in strum pattern. Again, I'm not hitting all the strings all the time. If I did hit all the strings all the time or not, you can hear the difference. Then if I hit all the strings. I think the first one sounds a lot more musical and it kind of stays out of the way a lot more. It doesn't sound like you're going ba 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 ba. Almost sounds more like sort of um, MIDI in a way if you do that, like everything all the time, all the same. So uh, that's another tip. Don't worry about hitting all the strings all the time. Oh, one thing actually with the strumming is what is going on with the actual strumming hand. It is, I would say, 80%, maybe more wrist and a tiny little bit of arm. So if you're strumming like this, if you look, notice here, if there's nothing going on and it's just like a solid arm, like a piece of wood just going back and forward, you want to try and get more of this. So the motion here is, it's more a little twist like that, as opposed to this big action. If I stay here and I don't move my arm at all, and I just concentrate on the rotation, if I take the pick, I can pretty much get to all of the strings with a turn of the wrist, rather than this. That's a big motion. If I do this, it's almost like a, um, what is it, like, like a defensive, uh, cricket shot like that, that's kind of what's happening with the pick. 
Now that's a bit extreme, so in order to take a bit of that twist off, I can do a little bit of arm. So it's this, as opposed to this. And that goes back to the whole, you don't need to hit all the strings all the time thing. A little twist like that, as opposed to. And that also facilitates an easier change in direction of the pitch. Little, little turns like that, so it's not this stiff thing like that. Kind of think of it a bit like a, like a, like a drum wood, I guess. Now, when it comes to when is it up, when is it down? Early on, you can get away with thinking, oh, it goes down, 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 up, down, or something like that. That works for simple stuff, but when you start getting into more complex rhythms, more complex rhythm playing, there's no way you could remember a strumming pattern like that. It's like trying to memorize pi to like 14 decimal places or something. Take something like, um, like Wonderwall. I know a lot of people defecate on Wonderwall and it's one of those songs. But the strumming pattern is actually quite involved. Yeah, the chords are easy, but the strumming pattern... There's no way, I mean, you might be able to, however, there's no way you're gonna be able to sort of sit there and memorize, right, it goes down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. It's, it's ridiculous. So in order to build up to that, general rule is if it's on the beat, so one, two, three, four, if we're playing in four, that would be a down strum. So if you're playing on the beat, one, two, three, four, it would be down strums. Which means if you were in an eighth note feel, uh, which means one and two and three and four. And one way of thinking about that is usually it's kind of tempo dependent, but if you kind of listen to what everyone else is doing and sort of try and hear what the the general smallest subdivision is, whether it be one and two and three and four and or one e and two e and three e and four e and. So if I did Wonderwall, that would be a sixteenth note feel. Is thinking that's kind of the underlying thing that's going on if you put every single strum in, which we'll get to in a sec. Eighth not feel will be one, two, and three, and four. Which would be one, and two, and three, and four. And if it's on the beat, it will be down. So one, two, three, four. And then that means that. All of the in-betweens, if we're in an eighth note field, one and two and three and four and, are already there in the right place. So if I go one, two, three, four, if I need, if the, uh, the, the rhythm goes that, 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 one, two, three and four, the and is gonna be an up. One, two, three and four. Now, the up is already there because if you go one, two, three, four, We've already established they're going to be downs. The in between the three and the four, you're coming up anyway. So it's not really an extra motion. All that's happening is you're just hitting the strings on the way up. That's it. Don't think of it as like a big extra thing. Don't try and memorize the downs and ups. As long as they're on the beat, everything else that you need in that feel will be in the right place. So one, two, three, and four. No extra effort. If I were one, two, and three, and four, dump, da, 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 da. Again, no extra effort. I'm just, the pick is just hitting the strings on the way up. If I put them all in, one and two and three and four and. There's no extra effort between that and this. Do it back to back. If you notice this right hand is just ticking away like that. Any, and then any variation of that, if you have something like um, the, the steel, Steeler's Wheel from Reservoir Dogs, which is kind of like a... Something like that, that's a lot of, a lot of up strums. They're all, again, if that's the, the tempo, one, two, three, four, they're all in the right place. All you're doing is just hitting them when you need to. So I'm going one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. If I go back to just normal. Dun, 
this hand has not had to do anything extra. If you ever find yourself going like this, off really quick, or you're starting a new um, bar on beat one on an up, then something has gone incredibly wrong with your life and you need Jesus. So that would be an eighth knot feel. Same thing applies now to a 16th knot feel, which tends to come up in slower tempos to kind of still make it more sort of um, exciting. So if you think about, you know, the academic way to do this would be for the eighth knot feel, it's got one and two and three and four and, and then go down and down and down and down. Up. And then you can just erase the ones you don't need and there's your answer. Same thing with the 16th knot feel, which would be four, four notes per beat. So one, two, three, four. In that feel, the rules change slightly in that before it was one and two and three and four and in a 16th knot feel, because you're going one, you're going to go one and, yeah, you one and two and three and four and in that feel are all going to be downs which facilitates the ups to make 16th note. So four fingers, well, eight fingers like that. And we went one and two and, one and two and, down, up, down, up. Now this is all crammed into one beat. It would be down, up, down, up, one, E, and, da. So that's your, like that. So now instead of this, and a 16th note feel will be, which means if you put the ups in, it'd be, it's good practice to do, to do that and put all of them in just to get used to what's going on, to get this hand used to that ticking away. One, yeah, no, two, yeah, no, three, yeah, no, four, yeah, no. and if you are going to do that, try accenting the first of each beat. So the difference between this and this Hopefully in the second one you can hear that it goes one, e, and two, e, and three, e, and four, e, and uh, so you're still maintaining that sense of, of pulse. You're still in it. If we instead of having like this uh, one e and uh, if we took this one away, the e, you get one and a two and a three and a four and a like this. Instead of we take the second one out, you get that. So if you now did that on every beat. But this hand is still ticking away. Even if I did something like this, if that was the feel, and I was just playing one, two, three, four, internally, I'll, and borderline externally with this hand, I'm thinking about all the ones that aren't there. So I'm going one, two, three, four. So this hand is still thinking of all the ones that aren't there. And that does two things. One, it keeps you in time. And the other, it means that your hand is kind of in the right position if you wanted to sort of improvise with it. So I'll just play around with that 16th knot feel. Start really simple and let this hand tick away and then start add, adding more to it. And this hand shouldn't, even though I'm, I'm putting more and more in or taking some away, this hand should still look like it's just going like that. So. Like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully there's some stuff in there that, that kind of resonates with you guys trying to sort of get your downs and ups in the right place. Have fun with that and uh, take your time with it and kind of really sort of check in with the pulse. If something gets a bit tricky, then just sort of back off and then simplify the rhythm and then keep this ticking away. Like that. All right.